Hey guys, how are we? This video is for section 3.3, Proofs with Parallel Lines. So in this video, in this section, we're going to talk about um, how we are going to use the converse theorems and postulates about special angles to prove statements about parallel lines. So remember, we're still working with those special angles, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, those angles that we talked about in 3.1 and 3.2. We're still chatting about them here. Okay, and then we're also going to learn about a new property that has to do with parallel lines. Okay, our vocab has to do with the converse angle pair theorems and postulates. Let's just review. What is a converse? Do we remember from chapter 2? So remember, a conditional statement has if, then the hypothesis, comma, then, what do we have next? The conclusion. Okay, remember the converse is when we switch that conclusion and the hypothesis. So then we have if the conclusion happens, then the hypothesis. So remember, that converse switches around, flips around the conditional statement. And that is going to appear when we look at these theorems. Okay, and let me give you the theorems here. Notice I have now converse of special angle pairs. Check these out. Look at even their names. It says the converse alternate interior angle theorem, the converse of consecutive interior angles, and so on. Guys, they're the exact same concepts, but the converse, the reverse of the conditional statements that we talked about in 3.2. So for the first one, it says converse alternate interior angles theorem. It says, if two lines and a transversal form alternate interior angles that are congruent, which we know alternate interior angles are congruent, then what we can tell is that we have two parallel lines. Before, in 3.2, we said if we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, then our alternate interior angles are congruent. So it's the converse of all of these statements. If we have two lines and a transversal form consecutive interior angles that are supplementary, then we can make the conclusion that we have two lines that are parallel. Notice our conclusion for all of these. Two lines are parallel. So the converse special angle pairs wants us to now be able to identify these special angles and be able to now conclude we have parallel lines. That's why 3.3 is all about proofs with parallel lines. So now we can use these special angle pairs to complete proofs having to do with parallel lines. So let me give you an example of one of those theorems or postulates. So it says, if angle three is congruent to angle 10, then which lines are parallel? So first of all, let's find three and 10. There's three, there's 10. And describe the relationship of those two angles. So to me, I'm looking at this transversal, and I'm going to say we are dealing with these lines, and to me, I see alternate interior angles. So if we know that they're congruent, I can say these two lines, line L is parallel to line M because of the converse alternate interior angles theorem, which I bet was written under that box, which I could have moved, but I'll just write it out, okay? So you look at the angles that they're telling you are congruent, identifying their special angle pair relationship, and now if I'm going to say that I have parallel lines, that means I'm using the converse of that theorem. Okay, it's all about making sure we can identify we have alternate interior angles. So let's check out a proof that has to do with alternate interior angles, the converse of that theorem. So here we go. We'll look at this guy. It says, we are given that angle A is parallel to angle, oh, I'm sorry. We are, we are given that line, line A, here's line A is parallel to line B. And we're also given that three, angle three, is congruent to angle 14. Here's angle three, and here's angle 14. Okay? We want to then be able to say 
prove that angle, that line L and line M are parallel. So let's go ahead and look at our statements. We always start with our given. And then we want to say that 14 are 10 and 10 are congruent. So what theorem have we learned that we say 14 is congruent to 10? Well, I look at their positions at those intersections. I look at the parallel lines that I know are parallel. That was given. Line A is parallel to line B. And they are corresponding angles, aren't they? They're in the same position. So by the co corresponding angles postulate, we can say that angle 14 and angle 10 are congruent. Now we want to be able to relate 3 and 10. Angle 3 and 10 are congruent. How? How are 3 and 10 congruent? 3 and 10, go back here for a second, guys. Notice I have... 14 is congruent to angle 10, and then I also have 14 is congruent to angle 3. So how can we relate those two angles? Remember, the transitive property. We have the transitive property. We can say that angle 3 is congruent to angle 10. Because now, looking at 3 and 10, we have to be able to say now, because that they are alternate, interior angles, we can say, look at our lines, and line L and line M are parallel by the converse alternate interior angles theorem. So we just proved the converse alternate interior angles theorem. Remember, we can't use that theorem when we prove. That has to be the final statement, okay? So now we can say after all of that that the converse alternate interior angles theorem tells us that line L is parallel to line M. Let's look at another example of how we can use these converse theorems and postulates. So it says find the value of x that makes line M parallel to line N. So I first look at their relationship, right? How can I relate these two angles? I'm going to note that they are corresponding, that they are corresponding angles. We can make a note about that. And what do we know about corresponding angles? We know that corresponding angles are congruent, right? Which means we can set those two angles equal to each other. 3x plus 5 equals 65, and we can solve this for x. I'll subtract 5 on both sides. And I'll divide by 3 on both sides to get x equals 20. We found the value of x. And the whole reason we can say that is because now we can say then m is parallel to n by the converse corresponding angles theorem. If we have corresponding angles, lines are parallel. That's the converse of the theorem. The postulate. Sorry, it's postulate. Okay, another type of example. So here it says, determine if there is enough information to prove that two segments are parallel. If yes, state that segments, the segments that are parallel. So we want to really look at these diagrams and understand how the angles are related to each other. So this polygon, polygon right, it's difficult to see where my parallel lines are and my transversal. But I'm working with this angle and this angle. And by doing that, it helps me identify my parallel, my potential parallel lines, and my transversal. So what do I know about angles 83 and 97? Well, if I really think about those angles, I realize that they're supplementary. And now, if I take a look at their position, because they're supplementary, I can say that they're consecutive, uh, consecutive interior angles. And now we can say that line AD and line BC are parallel by the converse consecutive interior angles theorem. So because I realized there was a relationship between those two angles, and now I'm saying, I'm able to say that they, those lines are parallel because of the converse consecutive interior angles theorem. Let's check out B. So we are now looking at this angle and this angle. So I look at the relationship of those two angles. The angle pair that happens here, doesn't that kind of look like vertical angles? 
right? Vertical angles, sides form opposite rays. Unfortunately, we cannot conclude anything about parallel lines based on vertical angles, okay? It's not one of the theorems or postulates that we can determine parallel lines on, okay? We only can do that when we are using consecutive interior, alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding. Okay, so that's some good practice on how we identify angles that help us determine if we have parallel lines. The last thing we have to talk about in this section is this new property, transitive property, which is very, it's a, it's a nice diagram we get to draw here. Transitive property says of parallel lines, if two lines that are parallel, two lines that are parallel to the same line, it gets tricky, are parallel. <laughs> Okay, so what does that mean? And here's an example of that definition. If you want to add it to the flashcard that you're making that definition on. So let's say we have two lines being parallel. They're telling us line L, and we can do that notation, and line M are parallel. But then they're telling me also that line M is parallel to line N. Okay, what can we say about lines L and N? Lines L and N. By the transitive property, we can say that lines L is parallel to line N. Okay, if two lines, we'll read, read the definition again. If two lines are parallel to the same line, L is parallel to M and N is parallel to M, then they are also parallel. L and N are parallel. Okay, transitive property. Just like we worked with segments and angles. All right, guys, that's section 3.3. We're going to do tons of practice next time I see you guys. And we want to get the hang of identifying these theorems and postulates using special angle pairs. Okay, great work, guys.